What's going on everybody? Welcome back. It's time to get nuts with the Deluxe Hot Toys Best Car Mando with its two Baby Yodas and its plethora, plethora of accessories. It's a wonderfully displayed action figure. It's really nice. I mean, even the wife came downstairs and was like, yo, that's crazy. Uh, it looks really great, but it's not perfect. All right, this ain't gonna be one of those reviews where we're like, yo, it's the greatest thing ever, even though it kind of looks that way with a little bit of elbow grease. It's got a lot of problems. We're gonna discuss that in the video, give you guys a whip around, show the paint, the articulation, and all the accessories and everything else that it comes with. You are watching the Red Cup Review. If you're going to spend $300 on an action figure, you want at least the packaging, I guess, to look kind of like it's, you know, really extra nice. And that's, I guess, their way of putting this this strip now, this artwork, extra little piece on some of their uh, newer figures Hot Toys been doing, which is pretty nice. Get a couple more shots of the figure in anticipation of what is to be opened up inside. Mandalorian and the Child Deluxe version, some artwork on the front. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same type of packaging. We open it up, and oh, look at that. The end of episode number one, right? Grogu, Baby Yoda, meeting Mando for the first time. Very cool shot that they recreated that with the, um, you know, the hot toy. And then, whoa, look at that. Damn, you know, I was, <laughs> wow. Look, they just got the accessories right in your face. Like, we're just going to punch you right in the face with the amount of stuff we're giving you. Uh, older hot toys would usually bury the accessories and stuff behind the figure. And there is actually more behind this. It's got to be. Where's his jetpack? But, um, you know, this is like, we're just going to smother you in all the all the goody goods that are up front. All right, let's take a look at Mandalorian up close. He's a great figure, but he's not perfect. There's a couple of things that are just annoying the ever-loving shit out of me about this thing. And there's really nothing I could do about it. But some of the good... The head sculpt looks absolutely incredible. I love the weathering on it. It is not just shiny. I love the way the natural shadows catch on the inside of the mask here. The helmet look great. Why would you ask, do I have the light on the side of his head and not the regular piece? Because it pops out ever so easily. This one actually stays in better than the other one. And the other part of his headpiece that clips into the side doesn't even clip in. It is. It doesn't stay in at all. And it's really annoying. And it bugs the shit out of me, man. Um, you got to just like put it in and then s just pose it the way you want and leave it. Because the minute you even breathe on this thing, look, it comes right out. I didn't even tap the figure and that thing came out. So unfortunately, mine, you're going to have to go with the light there, Mr. Rob Banks. Right? So you put the light in on the side of his head there. And we can move on with the rest of of this figure. I wanted to just point that out right away, but his head articulates going all the way up. He can look way, way up. He can look way, way down. It's on a ball joint here. The other thing fucking fell off. You see what I'm saying, bro? So it's on a ball joint here and a ball joint up in the neck. It rotates in both areas. That thing doesn't pop off that easy. I just kind of knocked it off right there. Type quick. And as far as the arms go up, they go up way high. But not much higher than that. I'd be really careful with it, though. He does have the double joints and the elbows, which is cool. So there is the fat suit underneath. You could hear it stretching and squeaking as you move it around. It's just the way it is, man. There's not much you're going to be able to do about that. So that kind of bothers me when it comes to posing him with some other things. Like take, for instance, his fire effect. So the fire effect pegs in right there. You see that tiny little slot right there? Okay, so you put the flat part of the fire effect, you can slide it right in there. And what's cool is that it actually lines up perfectly with the jet of the fire that's supposed to shoot the fire out. It lines up perfectly with it, right? And it looks great. But unless he's flying and shooting downward, he's kind of shooting like down. 
And I don't like that. Because he, would be, he wouldn't be shooting like that. He would be shooting it out straight. But when you straighten his arm out and try to even get the arm to go forward, it's a huge pain in the ass to get it to go out. Now you can get it to go out straight that way, but even then it's not really going out that far. So that kind of bothers me a little bit. He's only shooting from the hip as far as the flame effect goes. But look, i got to show you guys the goods, the bad, and the ugly, right? Be careful with these things, these bandolier pieces. These are the charges for his um, for his blaster that pegs in here, actually. Those are removable, and you can put them in the blaster itself, which makes no sense to me. I don't know why the hell you would want to load, actually be able to physically load the blaster up. There's like a, a spot in the blaster where they actually load into. And I'm not getting into all that. That's just absolutely crazy. Some people be like, oh, I can't believe I can load this blaster. I mean, come on. You're going to pose them, put them all up on your shelf. Honestly... I don't give a shit about stuff like that. So this will pig in here. I know I use a lot of foul language on this because I'm passionate. And that's how us New Yorkers are. We're passionate. You throw it over his shoulder and you can also clip it on with the magnet that's back here. There's like a little magnet piece that I'm going to get to in a second, but it kind of just slings over his shirt like that. I'm going to pull this out and I want to show you guys something that's really cool and another problem I have. Now, the way... I know I'm jumping around between articulation and the way it looks, but you guys can pretty much... You don't need me to tell you how it looks. You can see the shine. You can see the weathering effect. You can see how cool the gauntlet looks, right? That's where that piece pops out in the whistling burbs. burbs. The whistling burbs. The whistling birds pop back in there. Over here, you got um this little thing, which I lost on the floor, because those don't come out, but this one does. And I'm not going to show this off in the, articula in, in the accessory section, because I'm showing it off here. And this thing slid out mad easy. And it slides in and it pops in there, but you really got to stick it in there. Like, oh, get in there. Right? And it stays in. Ah, you really got to get it in there. And then you s tap it and it pops out. And this is just a recipe for disaster. Uh, unless you have these things just sitting in a detoff or cabinet. Now, moving on to something I do like. The holster doesn't have a magnet. It has this little strap that straps right in there, and I think that's just lovely because for those of you that remember the nightmare that was the best in Luke Skywalker, the magnets disintegrated. So half the time, those tiny little magnets just literally turned to dust. And I, I'm in like the most super controlled humidity, humidity controlled room you could possibly imagine, and that was an issue. But I'm glad they went with the strap because you don't got to worry about the magnet, dis you know, disappearing on you and dissolving. So that's cool. Which brings me to this. Look what we have here. More tiny little magnets that I'm telling you right now in about five years are going to turn to dust on you. And this is the same type of shit we went through with the Luke Skywalker from Bespin. And they clip together and you could slip the, the front of the blast uh, of the right blaster rifle in through that. And that's how it kind of pegs in through there. And it also goes through this little hole back here in the cape. This strap piece goes through the hole in the cape. You slide it through there. And you have the thing strapped across his back so you could see it. There's no wire in, in this, in the cloth cape, but that's fine. It's got nice weight to it and just kind of sits and rests very nicely. As far as the articulation and the legs go, they go out about that far, which is nice. He doesn't really throw that many kicks, but if you want to get, into, get him into a semi-crouching position, you'll be able to do that. It's got a nice little ratchet sound on the legs, so I like that too. Because they go all the way back and... It, yeah, they're going to stick in there. Not loose. It's nice. As far as the rotation on the ankles go, he's got great, great rocker ankles. Really great rocker ankles actually going forward and backwards. So you can get him in those cool walking poses or even some cool flying poses. And all of these also come out, I believe. These also will come out of here. So be careful with that. Too many things to be freaking careful with. The boots, though, look great. Uh, they could use a little bit more weathering, perhaps, on the bottom of the boots. Because he is walking in dirt and sand most of the time, especially on that that diorama they gave, that diorama diorama that they gave us. This is my favorite part of the. Um, I think this looks the best, as far as his armor goes. I love that it looks all melted and stuff. Look the way it's catching the light up in this area in particular. Very cool looking. I really like the way that looks, especially under certain lights. But this is all on Velcro. You could pop these off. This is soft uh, plastic here, which is nice. So you can pose him up without having to worry about his legs getting hindered by the uh, by the armor over here, which is pretty cool. And this is, you know, pleather also. 
And his arms on either side only go up about way high. So if he's shooting, he's shooting from the hip, unfortunately. But you can bring his arms all the way up like that to give him like that kind of uh, go ahead, make my day. Clint Eastwood looking thing. But he can't even point the blaster out straight up in front of him. That's about the best you're going to be able to get. And that is a little disappointing too. Oh, God. But look, man. They got to get off these fat suits to fill out their outfits. They got to develop a new body and stop being lazy. You know, I'm sitting here trashing this thing, but it's actually pretty nice. It's actually really nice. Um, if you're careful with it and you can move it around and pose it and uh, take your time with it, you can get them in some really dynamite-looking poses. But again, these hot toys are just sometimes, man, they just miss the mark from being perfect. So I'll give you guys the rating on this figure this far into the review. I'm only giving them four and a quarter. Now, you know what? Four out of five, because between the fat suit and this thing falling off his head, I'm taking off a full point for that. I've had it with this type of bullshit with these figures, but I'll tell you, it's still really, really nice. It's like a high, it's like a strong four out of five. As far as like the deluxeness of it, it's like a five out of five. But as far as the actual execution, because this is just driving me nuts and the fat suit, I'm taking off. I'm deducting a full point. But nonetheless, I digress. He still looks pretty damn awesome. And as far as the backpack goes, the jetpack, boom, right on the back. And that's that's got to make up for the nightmare that was the Boba Fett, right? Just put it right on there. Off. And it stays on, too. Look, it's not coming off. I'm shaking the crap out of this thing, and it's not coming off. So that's nice. You can see? Very cool. You don't get one. You get two baby Grogu's with this deluxe set. Cool as hell, right? Um, there's some nits that I got for it, but it's Baby Yoda. You gotta love him, right? So we're gonna take a look at looking at the pram first and how he pegs in. Here's the take. Here's a look at the actual base, right? Looks nice. A lot of nice little detail in there, and it's got this little rock piece that pops right off the top here, right where my fingers point. And this pops off, and you slide this little um, a piece of acrylic in there to make it look like it's floating. It's pretty much the same type of stuff they use for the uh, Empire Strikes Back Yoda. And then it just slides right up next to that. It doesn't even peg in or anything. It just slides around so you can have it kind of like however the hell you want to do it. We're going to pop this thing off to take a look at the pram and how Baby Yoda sits in it. That's what I'm calling him, damn it. He looks great. The skin on him is nice. He's not just one flat piece of green. It's very cool looking. He does have a seam going down the back and side of his head, though. That's kind of weird. Why he would have that seam. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. See that seam? Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know why he has that. But the coloring is all right. He's perfectly express. He's got a good expressions. He's good with the expressions there. And you can move the head around, right? Which is cool because you get like different, you know, articulation there. Hey, look, they're trying to give you any little thing they can. And how does he sit in there? With a magnet. Pull him out. There's the bottom. Pop him right back in. And he's got a nice little blanket in there, right? Which is removable. And you can have him, like, tucked away if you use the other version of Grogu and put him in there. You can have him tucked under his little blanket. Now, as far as the actual pram goes, or the egg, or this crib, or whatever you want to call it, that's pretty darn nice. It's it's nice size. It's I love this the paintwork on it, the discoloration, the scratchiness, all that other stuff. It, it gives it a nice, real, lived-in world effect. As if sand, like, you know, right, they find them on, like, that sand planet, right, where it's all dirty and dusty and stuff, so that's cool, and it just opens straight up like that. There's no hinges or anything else. There's a take a look at the inside of that goes, right? You know, remove the blanket, put the blanket in, back in. So you could also have this version of Grogu lay down in there. Come on, lay down, little baby. Little baby. Right, you can get him in there, pose up, you put the blanket over him. You guys get the idea. And there is that. Now, moving on, here's a little accessory that I didn't show you guys. Well, I will not be showing you guys in the next section, which will be the accessory section. But I'm going to show you here. There is the right Mandalorian skull helmet insignia thing that he wears around his neck. you got to take the head off. Put, that, put this on, then put the head back on. The head articulates pretty well, which is cool because you can get him to be a little expressive. None of the other body has any articulation in it, though, however... Because I guess they just had to go with a more, um, you know, like sculpted body as opposed to just having it like be cloth and put an articulated body under there. But the sculpting on this does look pretty freaking excellent. So I can't really complain about that. It looks like cloth. It really does. And um, it isn't, but it looks just like it. 
and his hands are painted just as good as his head. This head, however, does not have the seam that the other head does, so I don't understand that. But, again, the coloring is nice, the expression is spot on, that is, uh, that's Grogu, right? That's Baby Yoda, as far as I'm concerned. Here's something that they missed out on. They should have maybe have articulated this hand, maybe had it, like, spin this way. They came with, he comes with all these freaking accessories, this deluxe package. He doesn't come with the ball, though. He doesn't come with the, 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 the joystick ball that, uh, the Baby Yoda's just so enamored with and has to constantly hold in his hand. So it would have been cool to have had him come with that little silver knob piece that controls part of uh, Mando's craft, the Razor Crest, and had it be able to have it in his hand. That would have been a good idea. But nonetheless, you get two Baby Yodas, and here they both are. Very cool. Nothing quite says overkill like a Hot Toys Deluxe figure, doesn't it, right? I probably wouldn't use 90% of these things unless I hook them all up with them and just keep them in the cabinet. But it's nice to know that you're actually getting your money's worth and there is a metric ton of accessories. We're going to start with a smaller one, though. Here's the side of his head. This is like his little headlight. Headlight, right? It comes, actually pops on and off here on the side of his head and it plugs right in. So you remove it like that and plug it right in. It removes pretty easily, but it won't fall out, which is nice. It's not magnetic, and it fits in just like that. Moving along, we're going to take a look at the ice cream maker, probably one of my favorite accessories that I'm glad that... I'm just so happy to know that this thing exists, right? For 40 years, we thought this was Will Roll Hood's ice cream maker. We knew it wasn't an ice cream maker, but that's what we called it. And this is the thing that holds the Beskar, right? I'm sure it has a, a certain type of name. It's on two double hinges, though, so be careful here. You might snap it, and there's a little clip up here that you kind of got to, like, slide it back in, but be careful you don't jam it in there. So you got to, like, angle it a certain way. You see how it pivots? It's like on, like, a double pivot where you get it up in there, and then it kind of sits just like that. So in order to get one of these other ones to open... I usually put my finger in here without worrying about breaking this one, so please be careful. Oh, it sounds like it broke. It didn't. It just snapped out. And bam, there you have it, right? Very nice looking. Look at how cool that is. And the top piece here comes off, and it reveals the battery pack. So you're going to need to get yourself one of those little screwdrivers, right? One of the eyeglass screwdrivers. And take a look, look at this LED. I hate LED light-ups, but this looks awesome, right? Look at that. Look at how bright that thing is. Darn, man. Check this out, right? So we're going to move on to now the Beskar, and the Beskar fits right in there, right? Nothing says expensive ice cream like Beskar. Oof, boy, that looks nice, right? And then you just turn it off. And, you know, remember it's on those double hinges, so be careful when you're snapping it back into place. But moving along to the Beskar, that is, they're magnetic, but they're not all magnetic, right? So they look really nice and neat, right? They look nice and shiny, expensive. You got a little insignia there from the Empire. But they're, look, magnetic, right? But there's one that isn't. See that? It just slides right off. So you could put that back on and have it like he's holding one in his hand and picking it up and checking it out. So you don't just put this on top because it'll slide right off, right? Not magnetic. So in order to get it to sit, what you want to do is you want to remove that one, put that one there, and then put the magnetized one back on so that the other one doesn't slide out. See? And it stacks up very nicely. Very cool. Here's a little attachment that goes to his arm. This is neat. Not necessary, but it's neat to know that it exists. There is the whistling birds ready to, to attack, right? And like kind of like they're coming out and drawn up. And over here, this actually detaches. And then you can slide this one in, which is like a sheathed, sheathed version. Is that even a word? Of the whistling birds. And that goes right on his forearm. It just pegs right in. Here's his forearm right there. See that slot? And it pegs right in there. Like that. All right, there we go. See? And it goes right in. Bam. Very cool. It's nice to know that it's there, but it's not necessary. This one, I just, I don't understand this. It looks cool. I know it's one of those hockey puck things that he gets his jobs from. It's translucent. It shines very nice and bright in certain lighting. But it makes no sense that he would be hunting for himself. I don't get that. So that just makes no sense to me. But whatever. Something I'm probably never going to use. But it's there anyway. Here is his grappling hook. This slides into his arm. You take the hand off. You slide this up his sleeve, and it makes it look like he's shooting his grappling hook out. But be careful. This is not a bendy wire. It will snap. It's one of those extra carefully type ones. Here's his sidearm, which looks awesome from this direction. I absolutely love the detail in this thing. Uh, it looks great. However, the detail on the handle 
is actually the wood should have had what the rifle has real quick. We'll get to the rifle in a second, but look at the white rifle. It's got that wood grain. And I don't know if that's necessarily what this had the blaster has in the show but it would be nice to have that wood grain because it just looks nice and it's extra detail and i like that stuff but when you turn the blaster around the sidearm that is there's no detail so that might be accurate to the weapon itself however uh it just looks like a flat piece of plastic for some reason here but over there it looks great moving on now to the probably coolest accessory or the, at least the nicest looking one and that is his rifle it's even got a little bit of different, you know, like a blaster mark, kind of like it's been used. The, the metal is worn out over there near the barrel. The wood looks like wood grain. This piece right here detaches off. This is his little scope, so you got the scope for that. And then you could also pop it off and have him hold his scope, right? Like he's scoping out the guys that are holding Grogu, right? Look at that. There's his little thing right there, and then it pops right back onto the side. Right, so that's pretty cool. And the wood grain on this, the wood finish is very nice. I love that little piece of detail. Love woods. I grew up with wood paneling in my grandparents' house, so that's probably why I like it so much. And there's the thing that attaches to the front of his shirt, or the front of his um, best breastplate, however, that allows it to hang and sling over his shoulder. Very nicely well done. Love the metal look and the worn look on that one. We're only going to take a look at one of his hands, because... All of the hands are pretty much the same. It's got that nice Hot Toys paint that we come to expect, which is pretty cool. And it's worn out around his fingers, too. They look worn and used on his gloves, so that's pretty cool. And I'm glad they don't come. The figure didn't come with the, the fisty hands, right? The fisty hands are actually in the pack. I like that because I want to be able to take my figure out and start using it right away and not have to worry about switching things out. Here is the Mudhorn insignia um, you know, that he gets. It's a swap out, right, for his shoulder pauldron. And it's actually, hear the scratchy scratch? That's Velcro right there. So the shoulder pauldron pops off very easily. It is Velcro, and this one Velcro is right back on. And there's the Mudhorn insignia, and it looks great. Loves the oxidization effect on the armor, too. Love the paintwork on that, and it shines really nice, too. It actually looks like metal. I love the paintwork on this. That's really where this thing shines. Here is his tracking fob. Be careful, this thing doesn't bend either, but that's his little tracking device. He comes with this cool vibro knife, right? The vibro blade that he uses to kill the mudhorn with. Spoiler alert. But you guys would have seen it already. Look at the paintwork on that. That is excellent. And this slides right into his boot, and it's a little pointy, so be careful. Here are the whistling birds. Also a very cool... I love the way it looks like smoke coming out of there. It's not like shaving cream. It, it looks like smoke. And I like how they're not just shooting straight out. They're actually like has like a little bit of a twirl effect, which is cool. And it's the same thing like I showed you guys before. It snaps onto his arm, pegs right in, and that's why there's that little triangle under there. Looks very nice. And you even get like a little bit of a metal shining out in the front, which is very cool. The whistling birds themselves. And his jetpack. Be careful with the jetpack here because there's no articulation in these thrusters. The thrusters are nice. They pop right off and pop right back on look at the way the light captures that i know i sound cheesy sometimes when i'm i'm talking about these things like i'm actually trying to sell the damn things but just look at the way the light captures that it's great the freaking paintwork and the way the the molding is done is excellent you get all the different colors of fire which is nice it gives it a really a real authentic feel to it real authentic look and there it is Obviously, it's the same color as everything else, and it's painted just as well, so that's very cool. And it's also magnetic, so this is something they should have used for the Boba Fett hot toy. You slap it right on his back, it goes right on, it pops right off. Look. And it even go, not that you would put it over his cape, but look, it goes right on. Right? Very cool, and it's looking strong, too. So, excellently well done. Love the jetpack, although you're probably not going to see it, because what the hell are you going to do? You're going to have him facing forward or backwards or what? How are you going to display your uh, hot toy? Here's the fire effect. Love the flamethrower, and this clips on right there. You see the clip area? That clips right onto his gauntlet on his arm. And look at the billowing fire just coming out of here. That thing looks great. You put some light behind this guy or, or from above and have this on there, it's going to look terrific. You know, so that's nice. Nice effect. Like the way they did it. Very cool. Last but not least, here is his stand. And this is basically a repurposed stand of the Hot Toys of the Last Jedi uh, Luke, which was the, the salt base with the red where the footprints were. This is pretty much the same thing. It looks like there was a footprint here, like he's walking forward. So, I mean, he walks in sand. What else are you going to do? Uh, that This repurpose doesn't really bother me. It could have been something else. But 
you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. This is the only stand he comes with. I'm probably not even going to use this stand because in my displays, I usually just use the regular generic stands to save room. And he's got the, you know, the hard wired back in case you want to have like them flying around or something like that. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for joining us on this episode. In the description down below, we have links to everything your collectible hearts could desire, including some Red Cup merch if you want to support the channel that way. If not, the best way is to subscribe, hit the bell, drop a like, give me a comment, let me know what you think of Best Car Mando. How's your collection going? How do you think we're doing the reviews around here? It's always nice to talk to the people that are actually watching the videos. It's the best part of this. Anyways, it's a strong 4, 4.25 or so out of 5 cups. Uh, it's really nice, a little bit nitpicky, at least on my end, I'm trying to be as, uh, you know, as critical as possible for the people out there watching, you know, as truthful as possible. This is not an action figure commercial. It's a Red Cup review. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care.